right guys welcome back to another M Creator tutorial so today what I'm going to be teaching you is basically how to use the glow texture of an entity it's an optional feature uh, basically what the glow texture does is similar things like the enderman eyes or spider eyes uh, how they kind of glow um, a mess of like a emissively in the dark and stuff like that it's most noticeable in the dark but it also uh, can be during the day obviously but um, yeah we're going to be taking a look at that I'm going to be covering how to basically get the uh, modded entity all set up and then you can basically use that UV map to actually do what you want to do so uh, with that being said this is just the uh, setting right here where it has the actual feature and then I will be going into block bench we're going to be creating a modded entity it needs to be a modded entity in order to make a Java entity for your modification uh, bedrock doesn't actually su isn't supported for Java so obviously because it has bedrock Optifine um, very specific requires Optifine obviously and it might be limited um, and also not supported by M Creator. Um, Minecraft skin, not sure, never used it. And then generic model probably doesn't, probably isn't supported yet. So uh, yeah, we're gonna use modded entity, and then we're just gonna call it what our um, entity registry name is. I believe I called it test, so it should be just test. So we'll call it test, and the mod or that's the file name and then a model identifier should be test as well and lastly we need to make sure that our texture we're going to create a new texture actually we're going to do that in a little bit because we need to create our model first so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just create um, a simple shape for our entity i'll give it some dimension and then what we'll do is once we have the shape ready then what I'll do is I will go ahead and um, make the actual UV map for it. So I'm just going to kind of make it really simple and kind of something like this. I'm not sure what it would be, but it's something. So that's all that matters. We just need something for testing and a little bit more on that side perfect all right and then i'm going to group these under folders so this one should be the body so that one will be the body i'm going to drag that into the folder and then what we can call this is um body and then what we can go and call the group uh body group and then we'll create a new group for the whatever thing this is supposed to be <laughs> um we'll name this like head or something uh actually that should be head group the names need to be different from each other that's why i'm using group and then what we can do is we can just call that one head all right so that's our basic uh layout for that we might even want to shrink this a little bit just so it's about that. That looks okay. It looks like it's something that could actually work. Uh, next, we want to make sure that the um, actual pivot point is set up for these folders. So we're just going to hit the pivot point on our folder, select our folder, and hit the pivot point. And then it should be all set up. Now, uh, to test the pivot point, what we need to do is just kind of see how it rotates like this. And if it rotates normally, then it should be good. So, so far, so good. Looks good to me. All right, so that's good. And then what we're going to do is just reset everything back to zero. And then we can create our template for our texture. So I'm going to just use a template texture. And then I'm going to have it uh, compress and everything like this. I don't need really padding or anything like that, so I'm just going to create it. And then it should create a UV map that you need for your entity down here. You could align it all to whatever you need with the UV map editor, but um, we're going to save this. And actually, before we save this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the paint mode. I'm just going to quickly 
paint over some of this stuff. So what we'll do is we'll kind of use like, I don't know, um, paint some blue parts and stuff like that. Just so we can kind of identify where whoop, some of the stuff is. And then we'll paint that a little bit of a darker blue. And we just need that lighter part underneath. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hide this so we can get under it. And then I will just fill this in with that part. And I'm going to actually paint the face uh, a little bit more brighter so we can see where it is and then we'll put some eyes or something on it all right so once we've done that uh, we might want to just decorate it a little bit so what I'm going to do is just go under the brush tool and I'm just going to add some eyes and then we can do something like green for the actual eyes and then we'll just give it like a really derpy smile because why not we're having fun all right there we go um, that will be good enough for what we need we can illuminate the eyeballs themselves and then we can kind of get that part going all right so after you've done that make sure to save click the save icon right down on the texture itself uh, you want to name your texture um, actually the same thing as your entity model and your identifier name again the identifier name and um, model name should be all the same with your textures as well. So make sure it, it's all consistent throughout the, the pro the, the, the actual file itself. So once you've done that, just save it. Uh, I'm going to save it to my desktop. And then what you can do is you can go to file export. Now, again, this has to be a Java entity in order to export as a Java entity model. So if you're under the wrong workspace, you're going to have to go and go and convert project and then select Java entity for, in order to export it. So we're going to export that right now. And then it's going to be test.java. Uh, that's just the file that we're saving it as. And I'm going to save it to my desktop as well. And then we're going to save the block bench model as well to our desktop just so we can make edits to it later if we need to. Uh, because if the model updates, like if the game, if you update to another version, you're going to have to actually re-export this uh, file itself. And um, it, if you don't have it as a block bench model, it's going to be a really pain in the um, butt to actually export and set up again. You'll probably have to model everything. So make sure you save your block bench model. All right, so we're done here. Uh, we can just save that and then close. We can go back over to mCrater. What we'll do is we'll go to resources and then we'll import our texture first. So this one needs to be a uh, import entity one. And then we'll go and select our entity texture. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and select our JSON. Oh, pardon me. It's not a JSON, is it? It's a Java model. And then we want to select our Java model right here. And then it's going to ask us for the animations that we want to set. I want to set nothing for the body, but I want the head to kind of rotate like a head. So I'm going to set the head movement up. And then I'm going to uh, set new animations. And then we can basically have our Java entity there. Now that's only half of the issue. So now we need to actually create a, a little different map for the glowing eyes. So what we're going to do is I'm going to actually just pretty much select everything and except for the green eyes and I'm going to delete that and keep everything in the same place. So we can basically just save this part now. So we'll go ahead and save as and then we'll call it um, this doesn't really matter as long as it has test before it. So it basically keeps the name different uh, from other things in your project. So I'm just going to call it glow underscore glow. Uh, again, all lowercase. So it needs to be like that. And then we can save that to our desktop as well. And then we're done there. And then what we can do is we can go back in here, select our model, which should be the test one. 
and then we'll select our texture test and then we need to import textures import and then this needs to be a entity model and then we're going to select our glow version and then we can go back to our test and select our glow text our glow glow version of the test and that's all we really need to do uh, we can go under here set up this a little bit to be a passive entity so you can use a template and then just import passive entity uh, we might want to set the behavior to creature just to kind of demonstrate that it's fine I don't really want to die from something hostile so all this should be set up perfectly and spawning is everything okay so this needs to be set to creature perfect and then we'll hop in game and then I can show you how it works all right so this is our little dude here and uh, as you can see his head kind of rotates around and stuff like that and you can kind of see the eyes kind of glow a little bit this is uh, a little bit different color than we selected this is because of the, uh, the lighting effect on it um, normally it's gonna be a little bit of a lighter color uh, it's more prominent when it's in the dark though um, like in the light it's not that obvious but if we go down here into the caves and stuff like that and place them down just go down here uh, you can see that it does officially glow uh, now the UV map uh, one thing to keep in mind is that it will be relevant to where the position of your texture is so that's why we created our UV map first and then we created the glow map which basically just subtracted the parts that we didn't want to glow and then we basically added it on uh, to the parts that we did so again that would have been the two pixels that we left for the eyes and that's basically how that works um, it just basically overlays your UV map with that particular map itself and then it glows basically so hopefully you found this uh, tutorial useful if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and I will see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out